Hi everybody, today we're going to do a tutorial on Solid Edge within the part environment around assemblies. So we're going to assemble a project that I've been working on, an error engine. And I've drawn up all of the separate parts in the part environment. Now I'm going to assemble them all as one unit. So I'm going to open up Solid Edge. And then I've drawn all my parts as an ANSI. So I'm, when I open up my assembly, I have to choose an ANSI assembly. If you've drawn them as an ISO, you're going to want to open up the ISO assembly. So I'm going to open up the ANSI assembly, and that'll bring me here. Next, we're going to have to navigate to the Pathfinder. And usually it's held here in the top left corner. If it's not there, you're going to have to go to the Application button, Solid Edge Options, and that'll open up this page here. And then go to Helper, click on this here, show Pathfinder in document view. Apply it, click OK. That'll bring you here. Now, if we can hold down control and double click up here, that'll bring us to our Pathfinder. And you click on here, this drop down, and we want to navigate to the parts library. This is where all your parts should be held so that you can find all of your, your separate part files that you want to assemble. So we can go here, you can see that I've put them all in my Air Engines folder, and then you can go from there. So navigate to it using these buttons here, and then I've gotten to my Air Engines one. So what we're going to start with is the base, and I've drawn that, so I'm going to click on it, and it's going to bring it right into this, this assembly environment. But as you can see here, my base is a little bit upside down, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it, highlight around it, go to view, orient, and then I want to rotate it. I want to rotate it about the x-axis, and I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. So just type that in, click enter, and then it flips it for you. Now you can click escape on the keyboard, and that'll get you out of the command. After you have the base in, you want to move to the upright, double click on that. This is where you start actually working with in the parts environment within the assembly environments so what's going to happen here is you have to apply relationships to each part so that they work together and get them into the proper location so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an assembly using the assemble tool and then I'm going to create relationships so you can click here uh, and that is the relationship type and then a flash fit just basically puts it in place and um, what you want to do to hold something in place is to mate it and if you want to align it about an axis or a plane you can do so by using these functions so I'm going to use them I'm going to be using most of these uh, throughout this assembly so what I'm going to do first is I want to mate this upright with my base I'm going to do so by clicking on the bottom of my upright and the top of my base and that'll bring it into alignment with each other. Next, I want to use an axial align function with the hole where the bolt's going to go to hold it actually together. Click on that and then click on the corresponding hole that you want to line up and then it'll jump to there. And now to move it 90 degrees, you have to create that axial align again with this hole, with this hole where the bolt's going to go and then this hole where the bolt's going to be held holds it together. After that, it, should, it will jump into place. So it looks like so. You can click Escape, and then next you want to bring in your next part. Now we're going to bring in our cylinder. And we'll do so by clicking on the cylinder. It'll jump into place. And then we are going to mate the cylinder's face with the face of our upright and it'll jump to place like that. Now we also want our cylinder to rotate amongst an axis on the upright. That way that, that's the way the engine will run. So we have to choose that axis of an axial align, and that is this hole here where our bolt's gonna go, and then this is the hole where the bolt's gonna pass through to hold the upright and the cylinder together. So we click there, and it'll jump into place. Don't be worried if your cylinder is not parallel to the base or uh, to your upright right now like 
if it's on a bit of an angle. Don't worry about that. Because when we apply our other relationships, it'll jump into place. Now we're going to bring in our piston, click on that, and then now we're just going to flash fit our piston into the cylinder. So we click on the base of the cylinder of the piston and the inside of the cylinder, like this. And then it'll jump into place. If it comes in looking like this, you can click this flip button and that'll flip it into place, like so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click the axial align and we want to axial align the shaft of the piston with the inside of the cylinder like that and then now that's going to just allow this piston to be within this axis so next what we're going to do is we're going to create a mate but it's going to be an offset mate a floating mate and that's going to be from the top of our piston like here to the bottom of the cylinder and that tells you right now and as you after you click it it tells you that it's going to travel a total of 1.625 inches that's the offset that it'll that's going to allow so you can see that next what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our crank wheel so we're bringing the crank wheel like this and I want to create a mate with the front of the crank wheel to the front of our upright here in this face and then I'm going to create an axial align from the inside where the crankshaft is going to go here to where the hole of where the crankshaft passes through. Click like there. And then now those holes will be lined up and it'll be in the right position. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a axial align with where the crank pin is going to connect to the piston. So that is this hole here on the crank wheel and then this hole here on the piston and you can see that they jump to each other and they line up so that's saying that those two axes have to stay together so as it rotates it'll stay together after that we're going to bring in our crank pin here and then we can bring that over however you have to notice that there's threads and the threads thread into the crank wheel so what we're going to create is a planar align with the face of our crank pin to the face of the crank wheel here on the inside okay and that'll bring it there and then we also want to create a axial align from the axis of the entire crank pin with the axis of the piston the hole where it belongs and the hole of the crank wheel because we've already created an axial align of those two we can just choose the pin here and then you can see that it jumps into place and lines up with the face here as it would when you thread it in because the threads bottom out so now we're going to move to the shaft and we're going to double click on it we're going to bring it in to where it belongs on the inside here of the uh, crank wheel and as well as we have to make sure that the threads are orientated towards the where the flywheel is going to go which is on this side here the back side so what we're going to do is we're going to create an axial line with the shaft and the inside of the crank wheel that lines it up like so and then we're going to create a planar align with the back of it and the plane the, the face of our crank wheel here and that brings it into position there and it will look like this when we spin it around so now we're going to bring in the flywheel so we're going to double click on that and then the flywheel we're going to put onto this face of our upright so we're going to create an uh, mate with the face of our crank wheel here right there and the face here of our upright and that'll bring it into position there and then we're also going to create an axial align with the inside of the flywheel and this hole here on the upright so make sure we choose the correct one 
because you could I mean, you could really choose the shaft however we want to choose the inside so we stay consistent so choose that one there and then now it jumps into position now that your whole assembly is together what we're going to do is we're going to apply a motor to the crank wheel here and that's going to cause everything else to spin so you click this button here apply motor and then we're going to click on the crank wheel itself and then now we want to use the face of the crank wheel as our axis of rotation so here okay and then we're gonna have motor one like so and we also wanted to rotate 120 degrees of rotation that's all the way around like so and then we're going to click finish and then now we can go to simulate motor and then your motor one will be up and running and then we can click play and now you can see your motor is actually running like so you can pan around if you want to view different angles click stop and then you can even scroll down here bring it down like so and then you can hit play like that so that is um, how to create a assembly and to an apply in a motor. You can zoom in here if you really want to look at how it moves and how much space you have. And simulate the motor again. And then you'll see how it's moving. Like so. So I hope this tutorial was helpful to everybody, to anybody who watched it. And I hope you enjoyed it and have a good day.